Hi everybody, thank you for joining our webinar today. We're going to be reviewing the technical assessment for Microsoft Dynamics AX 2012. I'm Ryan Poliniak. I'm a customer account manager here at Western Computer. I work with a number of our Dynamics customers. I'll be joined by Arush Kuthiala, who is an AX consultant, and Arush is going to be describing our technical assessment. So what we're going to be covering today is Western Computer's technical assessment for AX. We're going to discuss the benefits that come from an assessment like this. The assessment covers configuration, operations, AX usage, and the purpose of the assessment is to document the analysis, document the recommendations, and to work towards improvements to some of the challenges that AX users face. On an overall scheme, the assessment provides a complete picture of the current state of your AX system. It provides recommendations to improve upon challenges, and those recommendations can help boost operations and really prepare for the future. So with that, I'm going to turn things over to Arush. He's going to talk some about what the assessment is and some of the details surrounding the assessment. Thanks, Ryan. Good morning or good afternoon, depending on where you're located, everyone. My name is Arsh Kutella. I am a functional consultant with Western, and welcome to our webinar on Western's AX2012 technical assessment offering. So I would like to start by talking about what our technical assessment is. The technical assessment is not a product that you purchase and run. It is a series of tests that are conducted by our technical team on your production environment. These tests review the configuration and usage of your system which is then measured against best practices. The final deliverable will be a report detailing which areas of your systems are performing well, which need to be looked into in a little more detail as it could be causing some harm, and finally which ones are in critical condition and need to be reviewed and remediated right away. So let's get into when you should have the technical assessment done. Western's recommendation is that the first analysis should be done shortly after go live. This will help establish a baseline because at this time you have the lowest usage rate and the lowest amount of data. As in most cases, there's a significant amount of data cleanup done prior to your migration from your legacy system. After that, it's recommended that this be performed every six months to keep track of where your performance is going as a whole and which areas have either already become or may become serious issues. It is recommended to run the assessment even if you don't see any issues at the moment as it's much easier to fix something before it reaches a critical stage. This also allows you to have more time to discuss different options that you can use to resolve the impending issues. So how does it work? The technical assessment can be broken into three parts. Collecting data, analyzing data, and presenting the findings. I want to be clear here and say that the assessment does not actually impact your performance. It doesn't do any tune-ups or change any settings. It's an assessment. The collection is done using a series of tools that are developed by our technical team. Chief amongst these tools is Microsoft Dynamics Perf, which is a set of SQL queries released by Microsoft for system testing. This, along with other tools, allow our technical team to review configurations, servers, and other areas that we will get to later in the presentation. This data is then condensed into a final report that is presented to the client in a report card format. There will be a summary of all the red or critical issues along with recommendations that come from our technical team as to how to resolve these issues. Now let's talk about the areas that are covered in the technical assessment. First thing we have is the Dynamics AOS setup. This will look at model store information in your environment including patches such as customizations, code fixes, hot fixes, security models that you have installed. It compares versions of the kernel and the application and helps understand why there are mismatches should any such exist. Finally, it confirms that the debugger and DLL hot swapping are off as these are major drains on system performance. Within the AOS setup, there will be a review of ISV solutions as well including queries and noted errors. However, there will be no debugging of ISV code whatsoever. The next area is user metrics. This assessment will look at the user sessions and ensure that they were terminated properly and how many sessions there were over a period of time. 
This is one we'll discuss in more detail later on in the presentation. Next we have Dynamics AX application settings. And the main focus of this section are recurring batches that are set up in your system. Batches can be anything from how frequently workflow is run, emails are sent out, or external files such as credit cards or bank recs are imported into the system. The assessment looks at the number of batches, frequency, and which users are setting them up. The other major aspect is database logging, which is the tracking of the created user and date fields, followed by the last modified user and date fields on a specific table. The analysis looks at how many tables this has been turned on for, whether all the legal and compliance requirements are met, and how many unnecessary tables are being tracked as well. Then we have data, archiving, and cleanup section. This section looks at the top 25 tables as a baseline and checks the rate of growth of these tables. It also looks at how much room is available on the drive volume that the AX database is on and whether the storage limit will soon be reached. From there we have SQL performance and query tuning. This section surrounds queries. First, it looks at any queries that have a high execution count which could imply poor query design. It then looks at queries that have a long runtime, which could indicate the same issue. These are looked at over a period of time, such as the last 30 days. Then there's a hidden index scan to ensure that custom queries have been properly set up and optimized. These custom queries are often the reason why certain forms are very slow to load, because the queries that generate the data are running slowly. Related to this section, is the SQL Server Maintenance, which checks to see if there exists a SQL job to re-index the queries, whether this is necessary, or finally, whether we need an entire rebuild. This is a very important decision. Re-indexing only takes a few hours, but rebuilding your queries can take many hours or up to a whole weekend. So you need to be sure that you're doing the right one. The final portion is the Accessible Hardware and Infrastructure Check which looks into related areas such as RDP servers, Citrix and Enterprise Portal servers, along with reporting services. These areas are looked into with their relationship to AX, not as standalone objects, and there is review of event logs for warnings related to AX. So now that we've covered what the assessment looks at, let's talk about what happens when it's actually run. So when you decide to do a technical assessment, the first thing that happens is that our technical team will set up data collectors. This will be both Microsoft Dynamics Perf as well as custom performance monitor data collectors. Once these are set up, the team will go into AX2012 itself and review versions, models, configurations, and other areas as mentioned before. Once that's complete, the main portion of the assessment will begin, which is the running of a series of SQL scripts. These scripts come from Microsoft Perf, but have been modified by our technical team for maximum impact. There are also custom scripts that have been written by our technical team. We want to stress here that this is not a one-size-fits-all situation. The set of queries and the parameters of these queries will change depending on the specifics of your implementation. All of this will be determined by the technical team prior to the actual running of the queries, which in total can take from anywhere between 8 and 12 hours. These results are then filtered, analyzed, and compared to Microsoft best practices. These best practices are not a list that Microsoft provides, but a series of informational releases. Our technical team will compare your results to the standards that are best indicative of your implementation and infrastructure. All of this in the end will be condensed into a document and presented to the client. From start to finish, this process takes about 40 hours. However, this is spread out over a series of weeks to allow for a sufficient number of data samples to be collected. So now let's look at what is delivered to the client at the end of each technical assessment. As stated before, the final document is prepared by a technical team. It looks at each individual test that was run and gives it a green, yellow, or red, meaning either no issue, potential slash non-critical issue, or red, which would be an issue that requires immediate remediation. The most important sections of the report are the executive summary and recommendations. The executive summary is a summarized assessment from our technical team about the environment state as a whole and any critical issues. The recommendations will highlight any of the major actions that need to be undertaken based on the tests that came back red. From this point, 
Western's technical team will work with your own internal IT team to develop a plan of how to move forward on the various recommendations. From there, there's a breakdown of each of the high-level sections of the system that were tested. These correspond to the areas of assessment that I broke down earlier. Here you see each section along with the test associated and the rating the test received. This lets you know at a glance which sections and which tests were causing the most harm and allow you to go into the third and final part of the document, which is a detailed breakdown of each test, a summary of what the test is assessing, and any recommendations as to how to deal with the specific issue in question. The document itself will provide a suggestion of what to do. It is up to your IT team, in conjunction with the Western Technical Team, to develop a plan of how to use these recommendations. To illustrate, I want to highlight an example of a few of the tests that we do. The first example is a client sessions by date. This can show us when users are logging into the system more often and by what margin, such as during closing or peak sales times. Using this information, an IT team can review to make sure the AX server resources are meeting needs of the end users without overtaxing the system. This will ensure fewer crashes and slowdowns at the times when users really need the system the most. Another example is the top 10 AX table growth. This is an example of where running the assessment multiple times can help show a trend in table size and help predict future growth. This will also highlight tables that grew unexpectedly, which could be a consequence of a new modification and thus will require an increase on the drive size. On the screen, you can see an example. We have three lines that started below the cutoff for the first top 10. And you can see that they grew much quicker relative to the other tables. And as a result, that could have been because a new modification went in. And so these are the kind of areas that this assessment will indicate to you. This test can also signal that it's time to archive or purge a specific table, but that depends heavily on which table you are choosing to purge, as many tables are related to others, and purging one without purging its relationships can lead to serious database consistency issues. Before this path can be taken, Detailed design work will need to be done with a development team. An example of an actual assessment we have done is where the assessment showed that the SQL Server configuration for the TempDB database was inefficient as there weren't as many TempDB files as there were CPUs. Ensuring that the number of files and CPUs match will optimize the performance of TempDB, which is heavily used in AX anytime a query is run or a view or table is sorted. By adding and resizing all tempdb files to be identical, we are able to make tempd far more efficient. In this next slide, you can see the results of making this change. We can see there is a significant reduction in time when running SQL tasks or queries. This was at an almost 60% reduction in runtime, and that was the impact of just one change. Finally, I want to close out with some of the common issues we see when we run our technical assessment. Two of the biggest causes of performance issues are alerts and number sequence setup. Alerts are the little notifications you see in the bottom right-hand side of your screen and also on your home page. They're extremely useful for workflow approval and other areas, but large accumulation of alerts causes serious slowdowns. It is prudent to clear out these alerts periodically, and AX gives you a batch process that can help exactly with that. There is a job created within the system administration module under periodic called notification cleanup. Here, you can filter for specific notifications that you want and delete them out of the system, thus clearing out any unnecessary or obsolete alerts. Number sequences are used everywhere within the system, from invoice numbers, journal batches, vouchers numbers. One of the key characteristics of a number sequence are whether they are continuous or not. Non-continuous number sequences can batch save a group of numbers and thus save time when the next one is generated. Continuous number sequences, however, have to do a SQL call into the table every time to check what the next in line is and thus causing system slowdowns. You should have monitoring in place to ensure that number sequences that are used quite frequently are not continuous unless they absolutely have to be. There are a few other common issues. The max degree of parallelism between the systems should be always set to 1, 
and auto growth should always be set to somewhere between 200 and 500 megabytes as opposed to the one megabyte that is defaulted. These are very technical in nature, so if you have any questions regarding these, please reach out to our technical team so they can assist you. Finally, I would like to talk about our offerings. There are two versions of the technical assessment available to you. The light version will check the settings against best practices to look for anything out of the ordinary. However, in the full version, performance counters will be implemented for a full 30 days to find any trends that you may not find for a moment in time snapshot. With that, we reached the conclusion of the webinar. So thank you everybody for your time. Arush, thank you for the presentation. Thank you very much.